So now that we've got the introductory stuff out of the way, let's really get into the heart of economics with the supply and demand model. The supply and demand model forms the backbone of a lot of what we're going to be talking about in economics because it's this model that shows us how prices and quantities are determined in a market. Usually we think about prices as the input, whereas in fact market forces come together to determine prices as the output of the model. Prices are important because prices are really what serve as the incentive to direct resources from one place to another in a free market economy. Before we get started, let's think about what a market actually is. Well, simply put, a market is just a group of buyers and sellers coming together. We can think of the demand side of the market as the buyers and the supply side of the market as the sellers. If we're talking about the market for goods and services, the suppliers are the firms making the product and the buyers are the households consuming it. If we're talking about a market for a factor of production, such as labor, in this case the households are the ones supplying their labor and the firms are, in this way, the buyers of the labor. So remember, when we're talking about the market for factors of production, the roles of firms and households are reversed from what we see in the market for goods and services. One of the main assumptions that we make when we talk about the supply and demand model is that we have a situation that's reasonably close to an economic idea of perfect competition. So what does this exactly mean? Well, perfect competition means a number of things. First, it means that our market has a number of products that are reasonably similar to each other. We can think of this in a strong form as the market has a bunch of identical products. For example, we're talking about the market for oranges which are basically a commodity, as opposed to the market for cars, which are more differentiated. But basically anything that approaches this identical product situation could be acceptable to think about with our supply and demand model. The other requirement is that we have enough buyers and sellers in a market that no individual buyer or seller has what we like to call market power. Under perfect competition, we can think of all the buyers and sellers as small fish in one big pond. And no individual buyer or seller has the opportunity to exert any influence over the market to change what the market price will ultimately be. Technically, there's a third requirement for perfect competition, and that is free entry and exit by firms, but we'll come back to that when we talk about firm production and imperfect competition. What's important to remember right now is that the supply and demand model is most applicable when these conditions are met, and when these conditions are not met, we have alternative types of models that may be more useful. In the next video, we'll introduce the demand curve and we'll talk about the different factors that influence an individual or a market's demand, that being how much of a particular good or service they want to purchase. Then we'll go on to talk about supply and the determinants of supply and understand how much of a particular good or service is going to be produced in that market. Finally, we'll put the two of those together and show how a market equilibrium is reached.